Jackie was beautiful, with pretty brown eyes and a thick brown hair. She was always a lot of fun. She loved to laugh and loved to dance. She was a great dancer. We'd go to the beach. She loved to jet ski. After college, she had planned to take over her father's business, but, but now who knows? Her life will never be the same. Everyone liked Reggie. He knew how to have a good time. Reggie was definitely a jock. He had lots of friends, played a whole bunch of sports. He hadn't had that new blue SUV for very long, and you could tell he was crazy about it. Reggie's not the kind of guy you would have expected to get into trouble and end up where he did. This is where 20-year-old Jackie Sabarito wanted to be. She left her family in Venezuela to come to the United States to learn to speak English. Reggie Steffi was a senior in high school. He played baseball and football. College was in his future. One of his prized possessions was the SUV he had customized. Early one Sunday morning in the fall of 1999, Jackie's and Reggie's paths crossed. In a split second, their lives would be changed forever. Just a few hours earlier, Jackie had been at a birthday party with some of her new friends. Reggie got together with friends and drank beer after work Saturday evening. Although Texas has a zero tolerance law that makes it illegal for anyone under 21 to buy or possess alcohol, later that night he went to a party and drank some more. It was late when Jackie and her friends left the birthday party. Neither she nor the driver had been drinking. Jackie rode in the front seat. About the same time, Reggie was also driving home. He was drunk. Reggie's SUV crossed the center line and hit the car Jackie was riding in head on. A fire started in the engine and spread to the inside of the car. What's the matter? I've got an emergency. I've got a car wreck. I believe it's on... Uh... Two of Jackie's friends died instantly. Jackie's legs were pinned under the dashboard. Trapped, Jackie begged for help, but rescuers could not get her out. Engulfed in flames, she screamed for 45 seconds. Then there was silence. Other than a few bruises, Reggie didn't seem to be hurt. He was taken to a hospital. He was okay. Except for one thing. A blood test showed he had been drinking. Police officers arrested him and took Reggie to jail. Jackie was barely alive when she arrived at the hospital. She was burned over most of her body. Her hair was gone, so were her nose and her ears. Her eyes were scorched and she was almost completely blind. The fingers on both of her hands had to be amputated. The pain was indescribable and constant. She depends on her father to take care of her. Jackie spent months in the hospital. She fights every day to recover. Since the crash, she has had 50 operations and many more will be necessary. When she can, she goes to school to improve her English. Reggie Steffi was tried and convicted for causing the deaths of two people while he was driving drunk. He is now in the state penitentiary. I went from a football field on Friday to a prison cell on Sunday. That quick, that quick, through the choices I made on one, one Saturday. And so it, it can happen. I had never been in any trouble before in my life. I had never gotten any DWIs or gotten in trouble with alcohol at all. But the one time that I made that horrible decision, and the one time that I got in trouble, one time, it was devastating. And the fact that drinking and driving isn't, isn't a joke, it's not something to play around with. It's real, and these are the consequences. All of a sudden, you're in this whole new world. Here you go, and you're by yourself. You're alone. 
and it's a shock. You always have a correctional officer telling you what to do and when to do it. Everywhere you go, you get strip searched and um, make sure you're not bringing anything in or taking anything out where you're not supposed to take it. The, um, the lights come on at breakfast at 2 o'clock in the morning and stay on because people come and go. Uh, lights out is at 10.30. It's definitely not like sleeping at home. It's, it's a sparse lifestyle. I probably miss the most. Uh, I miss my family, my friends, the people that I've, that I've known all my life. Uh, they've always been a top priority for me and something that I've always cared very deeply about. So that is probably the hardest thing to deal with. My life before was completely different from that of today's. I was independent, 100% independent. I depended on my father financially, but I could do most things on my own, almost everything. I attended college, drove my car, occasionally went to parties, danced flamenco. In other words, a full agenda for a 20-year-old. What happens now is that I am a bit more afraid because I don't trust myself. Not because I'm a different Jackie internally. It's rather that externally I can't do what I could do before. My father is helping me to do the regular things like uh, put on my clothes or cut the food. He cares me because my vision is not very good. Right now, I don't have a specific goal. You know, I want to finish studying English. I want, you know, to keep going with my treatment. It's, it's, it's very difficult because in the past, before the accident, when all the doors were open for a regular young person, and in my case, it's harder because most of the doors are closed, no? I'm a normal person. I was a normal high school student. Anybody can come to prison, and anybody can be involved in a, a, a drinking and driving collision. It's not something that just happens to alcoholics or uh, the bad, the trouble kids. Something I have always dreamed about but never thought of fulfilling was to be a singer. But of course, there's no way I could be a singer now. Because singing nowadays requires many physical qualities, which I regrettably no longer have. Depression can, can come up real quick when you realize all the things that are going on around your family and that you're missing. One doesn't know what's worse, if to die or be left in this condition. There are times that I wonder why was I left like this? Why didn't I die? Why did I remain here? Knowing what's happened, knowing the, the, the damage that I've caused to so many people and so many families, uh, I, it's something that I can't describe to anybody. The person that caused my, my accident destroyed my life completely. And the prison sentence is nothing compared to the life sentence that I'm going to live with knowing what I did and the consequences of what I did, the loss of life. It didn't have to happen, period. Not too long ago, I was in high school, and I was out there, I was making the same decisions that most of you were making. I was going out there on the weekends, and I'd hang out with my friends, and I'd drink. We'd drink. It was the thing to do. But you see, one of the bad decisions that I made was getting behind the wheel to go home. And you could very easily make that same decision. You might have made it before. But I want to let you know you have a choice. There are a number of things you can do. 
First of all, if, if you don't drink, you can't be impaired. But you can probably call one of your friends that hasn't been drinking. Or maybe get a designated driver in the first place so you don't have to wait till the last minute. Or you can even call your parents. And you might have to suffer a little consequence for it, but I'm sure they'd be much happier having you home alive than in a body bag or behind bars. So I can get up here and I can tell you not to drink. I can tell you not to drink and drive. But in the end, the decision is going to be yours. And you have to make that choice. And so I hope you make the right decision and not the same decision that I did. My name is Jacqueline Saborido. This is a picture of me before I was hit by a drunk driver. Before the car caught fire. Before two of my friends died. Before I needed more than 40 operations. This is me when my life was just like anyone else in college. This is me after being hit by a drunk driver. <laughs> 